Welcome back everyone, I'm Sethiroth, and I have a confession to make. I kind of did a thing, and it became another thing, and things broke. So, I kind of have a tail, and I'm either a dog or a wolf, I'm not sure which. And this is so not my load order. <laughs> So today is going to be one of those little slower, more laid-back kind of videos because I've got some explaining to do. So if you probably noticed when you hop on the Nexus, there's a big blue bar that shows up when you're looking at mods called Collections. And I never really paid them much mind for a month or two. I can be kind of stubborn about how I like to do things, and I was very proud of my 300 mod load order. It took me two years to put that little beast together. And, uh, yeah, so after a couple of months, I decided to take a little dip and do a little digging. And it turns out That's they now have a feature that allows you to install other people's load orders. So, eventually, I will be able to take my load order, in essence, publish it, and then you guys could install it and play it. Which just boggles my mind that that modding has got to this point where you can install another person's 10 years of hard work modding with a couple of clicks and a few hours of mod loading of downloading and you're good boggles my mind this mod list that we are seeing now is called lost legacy i actually got it off of another system called wabajack uh, Wabajack gives, uh, it's better at larger load orders, so if you're going to use Vortex to do work? mod compilations, that's really good for smaller load orders, which is great if you want to try different like thematic things or individual quest packs and things like that. But you know me, I'm kind of go big or go home, so I very much just decided I was going to just slam into the biggest load order I could find. Which happened to be this beast, uh, and I will just pop over to the mod configuration to give you an idea of just how many mods there are in this thing. The last I counted, this mod list had over 1,600 mods and plugins. Yes, 1,600. The downside, this isn't the case with every mod list, but the case with this mod list was that it was on uh, the AE version of Skyrim, and I have been modding for two years on Special Edition. But I saw this on Wabajack and just thought it looked absolutely breathtaking and wanted to give it a try, so I did. And then being the go get and have it all yourself kind of person, I decided that I could just jump rope between my anniversary edition of Skyrim and my special edition. And that worked for about a week. And then mods that needed to be updated for special edition or changed in order to be AE friendly decided to break. And I couldn't figure out which one it broke, which meant my load order was no longer usable. All in all, well, by load order, I mean the other two dozen profiles that I had on uh, MO2 are not working now. On the other hand, I now have a fully functioning 1600 mod load order. Like, I've played this for a few hours now, and the only time it's kicked me out was I got stuck on a boss and died like 10 times in a row, and it finally just couldn't take it and kick me out. But it also did that on a smaller mod list that I tried, so that might just be a feature of the mod lists themselves, as if you're stuck in the same cell for a dozen times, the game just kicks you out. Which, let's face it, if you're fighting the same boss more than ten times, this is not Dark Souls. Go go level up, go get some new spells or better follower or new abilities, and go do your thing. Huh. <sighs> So as far as this locale is concerned, um, this guy, this mod loader does include JK's Skyrim. It also includes another mod called Beautiful Cities, and that's where all the extra vegetation is is going on. It has a patch for JK's Skyrim, so the two of them can run together, and it just creates this absolutely breathtaking version of White Run. I just love the extra vegetation and the trees and the shrubbery that it adds in. Just oh, look, at, even from here. It adds so much more color and life to Whiterun. Ah, modding is so amazing. I love it. I aspire to at one day be able to put together a 1600 mod load order, but I'm not that good yet. Which brings me to my other little 
caveat. Because in order to get that good, oh, look at that. Even the little tapestries here are, are, are moving in the wind. There's some kind of a physics engine here, too. I don't even know how to install that. Ah, uh, there's a lot to learn. And I'm trying not to feel overwhelmed. I'm trying to be more inspired because I want to be able to build this myself. This mod loader, load order is fantastic. It has maybe 90% of what I would like. Uh, some of the NPC overhauls are a different flavor than I would pick on mine. And some of the user interface would be a little different from mine. But I mean, that's the case with every load order, is that there's always gonna be something a little different. However, I have learned that when you're diving into all these different uh, load orders, whether it be mod lists or collections, the ability to just step into someone else's massive load order gives you such an amazing opportunity to try out different mods and to see what you like and what you don't without having to go through the hours and hours of processing and testing just to get a mod in your list. Right, so for example, if I want to do a hardcore survival type build because it sounds cool but I've never actually tried it in practice rather than spending 20 hours downloading and installing and updating all of the right mods so that I can make my survival playthrough I could just install the Librem uh, mod list on Wabajack and just jump right in and then that gives me the, a taste of something very similar to what I wanted <laughs> it's kind of funny because that was the first one I tried I went straight for survival hardcore type of a playthrough and it used spell research along with spell forge which is a mod i haven't i think oh i think i just recently did a video on that or it's in the wings i think i recorded it but i haven't published it yet but it's coming anyway so my point being i was able to test out all of that survival-esque type stuff with additional mods that i hadn't installed yet and was able to already form an opinion on which of those mods i would want in my load order and which ones i wouldn't so it gives you a really fun opportunity to just check out all these different combinations of mods and especially like your, the mods for different cities or NPC overhauls and things like that. Gives you a really good chance to get a feel for different styles and then that helps you, if you're new to modding, to figure out what, what your flavor is. Like what, what do you really like? So for example, you guys, those of you that are... Um, Need supplies? For example, those of you that are my subscribers know that I tend to use Ordinator. It's the first perk uh, mod that I tried, and I really liked it, and I haven't seen fit to try anything else. This person is going after my own heart, go big or go home, because apparently there's a mod called Vocrinator, which takes Vocri, which is Ordinator's little brother, and combines it with Ordinator, so that all of them are together for every single perk tree. So, yeah, <laughs> that's got to be 45 different perks just for restoration. It's an entire playthrough now in one perk tree. And I'm still trying to figure out if that's really for me or if that's just going overboard, which is saying a lot because I just burned out a 300 mod load order by going overboard. So that says a lot about my judgment. But, I mean, this is an example, right? This is a, a heavily modded load order with very specific settings. And, oh yes, by the way, they also have custom skills. Oh my gosh. Hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, expedition in academia for uh, Legacy of the Dragonborn, which I haven't gotten into because it looks big and complicated, but I know I want it because it, it, it is the completionist player's dream. Unarmored defense. Why on earth would a mage not want the unarmored defense skill? Totally makes sense. There's lichdom, because let's face it, someone made one of these for the undeath mod for the classical lichdom expansion, and I didn't know, and now I'm excited to play undeath again, be like the third time. But I mean, I want a perk tree for my lich. <laughs> why, why can't I have a perk tree for my lich? What else we got here? There you have also insight. I'm not sure what that's for and Vigilant of Stendar. So there's also a perk tree for Vigilant, which is by far my favorite New Lands mod. It, it is breathtaking and wondrous and... If you need portions... You try I, I'm still part. trying to figure out how I want to approach mods on this channel that add in like 20 or 30 hours of new gameplay. I don't know whether it's better to show you guys like the first hour of one of those mods so you know how to get started 
and then leave you to explore, or if I want to just do a whole playthrough and show you guys the entire mod, because uh, some of these... This mod, this load order in particular, has four different New Lands mods that I haven't explored yet, I haven't played them at all, and now I could test them out without having to mod them first, without having to fix the, fit them into my load order. I can just test them and play them. Uh, anyway, oh yeah, and the map. This is definitely I I fell in love with this load order as soon as I loaded this map because I mean, would you get a look at this? You, you individual locations. I can fast travel to individual locations in every major hold, in Morthal, in Solitude, individual locations. And if that wasn't even good enough, each of those individual locations gives you experience. If you are doing the experience mod, I've showed that before on my load order, or on my channel. It is in my load order, so I guess both counts. Experience makes it so that you don't level up when you train up your skills. You level up when you explore, when you find new locations. So what it does when all of these individual map locations for each major hold are there, is you can actually get an extra three or four levels you for your starting character tick. by just exploring the, the, the holds themselves. And you just gain experience and can level up just doing that, which really encourages exploration and makes it so much easier when you're doing different quests because I can literally go over to Whiterun and go just fast travel right to the Temple of Kinnereth. If I'm doing that one of those quests, I can just bloop right over there and I'm done. I don't have to spend 20 seconds or 30 seconds Thus, stomping through Whiterun to get to my location. Uh, we're also going to go to Riften because this also uses the same combination of Riften. JK's Skyrim the and the Beautiful Cities mod. Believe. Oh yes, yes. And the user interface, this is one thing I am not sure if I like this this inventory thing that just immediately pops up. I have a feeling in combat that might start to bug me, but it is so user-friendly to just be like, oh, I can immediately scroll through and grab whatever is in any item, any, in, any inventory, container, corpse, whatever, which is just fantastic. <sighs> I can't argue with that. I just, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so again, this is Beautiful Cities plus JK Skyrim. There's a compatibility patch to make them both play nicely together. Again, I love the extra displays of color. It just brings these cities to life. I'm gonna be showing you guys Whiterun, Riften, and then I saved Solitude for last because obviously they went crazy there and turned it into a vegan's dream, I don't know. Or a flower lover's dream, some kind of a druid's dream, somebody that loves plants, they're everywhere. Yeah, so this is where I'm at. I am in a 1600 mod load order. Uh, a lot of these mods, at least some of them, I could still do showcases on pretty easily. Uh, like the user interface, uh, the map itself, it has additional features I haven't found yet. Uh, some of these custom races, because, I mean, let's face it, how often do you get to play a fox? Oh, no, no, Breno, no, I do not want to be locked into dialogue. No, 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 I'm not doing a quest right now. <sighs> All right. Oh, slow down. Okay, now we can relax again. Wow, just look at that. Oh. Wow, I can see individual leaves moving. I love modded Skyrim. It is fantastic. Anyways, but as far as my channel is concerned, now I'm kind of... It wouldn't take me long to rebuild the 300 mod load order, but I also want to learn how to mod the right way. I was kind of self-taught when I first ran into the modding okay, things. The I just kind of, of had a problem and then looked up how to fix it or how to mod it and put it in. I didn't really go to the modder's bible, for lack of a better word, in town, eh? and start actually fishing, figuring out how to create a bug-free load order. Part of me wondered if it was even possible, but now I'm actually playing a 1600 mod load order that has almost no issues. Uh, it, it had one crash to desktop when I was in the same cell like 12 times, which is, I'm, I'm fine with that. Uh, oh, okay, last but not least, we're gonna check out Solitude. Oh, and I haven't even shown you guys the uh, the mage spell, the mage mods. The, 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 there's a mod, I haven't, I think it's a combination of mods. I haven't been able, I haven't sifted it all out yet, but when you start as a mage in the College of Winterhold, there's like eight or nine different quests to start with that take you to different teachers that actually teach you basic spells. Like, you you, you learn the Lesser Ward spell at the start with Tolfdir, 
And then he sends you on a quick quest to learn water breathing. It's like, oh, I'm actually learning spells at the college before I do any major quests that involve dying, potentially. Huh. I approve. Without trying our fish. Best uh, in Skyrim. Yeah, probably my biggest thing to get used to here is this load order. You know what? We're going to... Oh, wow. Okay. I mean... Might as well give us find Watch a good the skies, view. Traveling. And look at that. Oh, that is beautiful. I mean, it looks like the gods are already going to war, and you just get to sit back and watch. All, this standing <sighs> All right, give me a sec to get a, a room for the night, and we shall return in, return in the morning. Welcome back. It just stopped raining, so solitude you're going to see in all of its foggy post-rain glory. Let's see, where was I? So yeah, this is where I'm at. Um, you can, so there's a couple different tactics that you can use with these mod lists. Uh, my favorite is mod exploration. If you feel overwhelmed at the thought of downloading a bunch of these mods and trying to get the, lo the mod list to work on your own system, Particularly since some of them will require you to install a different version of Skyrim. That part can be tricky if you already have a load mortar set up on an older version of Skyrim, because the older version might, you know, the, old, the older load order might be break. Like, mine did, so keep that in mind. But you can still go online. Uh, a lot of the load orders will actually post their mod list, and then you can get a breakdown of what they use in the mods without actually playing the mods. Uh, some of them use a website, oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's, uh, if you look up on Wabajak Lost Legacy Spiced wine and look for its mod list, it actually lists its mods by category. And that way you can scroll through and be like, okay, what are your city's mods? What are your texture mods? What are your combat mods? Uh, most, mod, most of these load orders just give you all the mods in one big, long, tedious list, which is super hard to sift through if they have over a thousand frickin' mods. But Lost Legacy makes it really easy to, to sift through. And I think that's what I'm going to do Wait, as I'm kind of gradually building my next load order is I'm going to be, in essence, window shopping with different different mod lists and picking out the, the sections that I like. So I really like the what he did with the cities, for example. I love, I've already liked JK's Skyrim, and now I know I can add in beautiful cities and get these massive, massive pine trees uh, right alongside everything else, which is absolutely beautiful. Can't argue with that. Uh, but some of the interface I might want to tweak, or some of the races I might want to adjust, depending on how things work when I'm uh, loading, when I'm actually trying to make my own 1600 mod load order. I have uh, quite a bit of learning to do. I have been asked previously on this channel to do like tutorials and instruction guides. So I think that's probably where I'm headed. I'm still kind of making this up as I go along because I was not expecting to suddenly not be able to use all of my main channel. I will still be posting the link to that load order because it was very stable before I started trying to jump rope multiple versions of Skyrim, <laughs> which I think should be pretty straightforward that you shouldn't do that if you're new to modding. Just stick with whatever version of Skyrim you're going to be modding for, because if you don't, it can be painful. Yeah, so that's probably where that where we're going. Uh, window shopping on some of these massive mod lists, because I mean, if you can actually, in a couple of clicks and a few hours of sitting around, access a 1600 mod load order. That's the Dragonborn Gallery, by the way. We will be visiting you later. Why? Why? Why would you not? Why would you not? At least just to see what can be done. At least to find a little bit of inspiration into what you could change your Skyrim into. Just fantastic. And there's so many different kinds. So there's another mod that I've been thinking of trying called uh, Requiem. And then Percus Maximus, I think it's called. Uh, anyway, those are overhauls that hit, like, everything in Skyrim. The they do everything from perks to spells to combat, all sorts of things. So you have to put in those mods first and then build an entirely new load order on top of them. Otherwise, you're going to have a ton of conflicts, right? If you've already got 300 mods in your load order, you do not just put Requiem into it and call it good. 
this Dragonborn deck gallery over there, that, that's from the Legacy of the Dragonborn, that's another one you don't just plop that into the load order and pray for for it to work out. That that you, you start with that and you add in stuff as you go. Because that's just the only way to fly. Ah, wow. Okay, so that being said, I will be doing some tutorials and trying to learn more of the tools that are around for modding. Uh, there's a bunch of them that have gone, I mean, it's in only a couple of years, I've seen a couple of them get completely replaced. Like I used to think that uh, Finis was the best one for animations, but apparently now it's Dar. So I have a lot of catching up to do on modern modding, but I mean, let's face it, I could really use this extra modding. <laughs> I could really use these skills, because I would love to see what a Sethiroth 1600 mod load order would look like. And to be fair, I've only I've only explored, and even then I've only briefly explored, two uh, mod lists so far. This is kind of a power gamer fantasy type mod list, and then I did a survival hardcore. I was tempted to do a playthrough for that one, but survival hardcore takes so much longer to do, accomplish the simplest of things because you've got to do resource management and a number of other things that are very fun, very immersive, but if uh, you're just watching from the distance of your computer screen, might not be as immersive as if you're doing power gaming and becoming a veritable god in Skyrim and so on. Uh, anyways, so I think that is it for today. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see the most. Would you like to see this load order in more detail? Would you like to see some additional tutorials? Would you like me to just uh, roll up my sleeves, get back to my old load order, and leave all these mod lifts behind? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and thank you for bearing with me during this uh, lovely tour of JK's Skyrim and Beautiful Cities. Uh, combining those two mods is absolutely breathtaking hey, for these two major cities. Uh, Beautiful Cities obviously focuses more on vegetation, so it doesn't really do much to Markarth or uh, Winterhold. Or Windhelm. Once again, thank you guys so much for your time, for your attention, for letting me know in the comments what other mods you guys want to see in, your load orders, in my load order in the future. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Take care.